Hello and welcome to another computing video. Uh, in this video we're continuing my little series introducing JavaScript ES5 very quickly for people who uh, have hopefully seen one or two programming languages before and so don't mind that the videos uh, go a little bit quickly introducing this language. Uh, now the point we're up to I would like to talk about uh, this problem that JavaScript hasn't got an explicit module system and so uh, nowhere have I talked about package or module etc uh, etc et and web pages importing JavaScript they might use lots of scripts and in the past, this could be a problem uh, because different scripts might reuse variable names that were the same in the global scope. Uh, and so, for example, jQuery defines dollar as the, the, the variable with which to access jQuery's functions. Um, but so I believe did, uh, I can't remember if it was prototype.js or one of the other ones anyway. Uh, but so there were these two quite popular libraries, but if you combined them and loaded both of them in the same page, you'd get unexpected effects because they were both trying to define things upon uh, the same local variable uh, called dollar. So in times gone by, this was a problem. Variables from different scripts would collide. Um, however, it turned out that uh, they didn't really need to introduce a module system because uh, you could do a solution using function scope or using block scope uh, with let now. Uh, but let's show you this uh, using function scope. Uh, so what you would do is you would say, I am going to declare a variable that's my module and I am going to make this uh, equal to an anonymous function. I'm going to declare a function that has all my code inside it. So all of my code is now inside this local function scope and is not on uh, accessing the global namespace. And so it can't collide. And if we wanted to, we could take this uh, anonymous function and we could immediately execute it to do what this stuff is saying. So let's just copy from that part there and let's pop across into a REPL and we'll paste it in and we will see what happens. So this should um, this should uh, be a function taking a single parameter s and here's the, the block scope, uh, here's the, the function body uh, declaring a variable dollar which will have function scope and should log it out and so that should log hello. And so I run it and there we go, there is hello. And it doesn't matter if in the global scope I go and set, declare something on dollar to be not hello, uh, because this dollar here, this is the function scoped dollar, not the global scoped dollar. And so that should not interfere. Um, and, uh, oh, hang on, what have I got here? Uh, type error not hello uh, is not a function. Uh, oh, why is that happened? Um, Okay, I'm not quite sure why that happened. Oh, I suspect that was uh, semicolon inference. Putting the semicolon in seems to have cured it. Uh, let's remove the semicolon and it's not happy. Okay, so this is one of the one of the occasions where JavaScript has not been able to infer that I would like a semicolon at the end of that line. And I've had to put a semicolon in manually. Uh, many apologies for that uh, initial unexpected behavior. Uh, but so this dollar here, that string hello, it's still it's logging out down here this function scoped hello not this global scoped not hello so we haven't had a collision um, now the next thing that you'd need to do though uh, is uh, okay but we're defining everything inside uh, this function so that it is all nice and contained but the reason I wanted to import this script was so that people could call things on it and so somehow I need to be able to export some of these functions and so what would happen? Uh, there is a global object. Uh, so if you refer to, uh, to a global variable, um, you are effectively referring to a property of the global object, which in a browser is called window. And so up here, if I say window dot, there's lots of different things it's got. And I can go alert of boo, and I can make it pop up a message for me. There we go, boo, it said boo. And that is the same as if I just called alert of boo, because I've called it on this global object called window. Uh, but so that means that from my script, I can define properties on the global object, on the global window object, and effectively export those names. 
uh, and so let's grab this one here and so we're going to say uh, not bookmarks come on uh, we're going to say variable module uh, let's say mod because that's highlighting that as if that's a keyword in a, a later version of uh, JavaScript which we're, we're not getting into right now um, so var mod uh, is uh, here we go and we've called this anonymous function and we've immediately executed it and in this case what we've said uh, and let's just put the semicolon there just in case of semicolon inference accidents uh, and we've said we're going to export this function by putting it onto the global window object so window.logglobal is going to be that function uh, to log that let's just run that check that works undefined uh, and now at the end I should be able to out here say for instance window.logglobal and so clearly that should call this function and should log that dollar which is in the function scope dollar which is that dollar there and so it should print hello and it does and because this is on the global object I can just call it log global and hello and it's worked and again this is not dependent uh, you know it's not going to collide with whatever else I might do on the global scope not far dollar is not hello but this dollar here that is the the function scoped one and this one here is being declared inside this function even though it's inside another function you know it's even so though it's inside its own smaller function it's still inside this function and so it's going to pick up this dollar not this dollar and so that should still say hello not not hello and I run it and it says hello uh, now typically speaking we might not want to do it um, in that way what we might want to do is say function hello uh, sorry function log global and so in here we say console dot log of dollar and so then to export it instead of defining the function there and there what we're doing is we're going to say okay to export that log global function that at the moment only exists in my function scope and I can't call it from outside I'm going to say window.log global is log global and so now I have exported this function out of my anonymous immediately executed anonymous function which is being my module and so I have now exported that uh, log global so that I can call it and there it is hello uh, whereas if I was to comment out the line that ex is exporting it, I would get a reference error, log global is not defined. Uh, I have had to do that in order to export this function. And so that is uh, the workaround that came about for dealing with the fact that JavaScript does not have a, ma a native module system. Uh, instead, people would put things into uh, immediately executed anonymous functions and would use window dot whatever to export the, um, the, the, the names that they actually wanted to export uh, so that they would not collide with uh, so they wouldn't pollute the global namespace uh, with every function that they were defining. Uh, okay so uh, these slides again show that so if we want to export it uh, let's call that showing it's independent and here I've used dollar goodbye instead of uh, in, instead of uh, not hello uh, but essentially the same thing. Uh, now, one last thing I'd like to mention, though, before we uh, before we move on, uh, is something called strict mode. So, ES5 uh, is the most recent version. ES3 uh, was the version beforehand. Um, the and ES3 had a habit of failing silently for a number of errors. And so, for instance, here is a little bit of a puzzler. If I was to say var a is one. And I then try and set a dot name to boo and I console dot log a dot name. What is that going to do? Pause the video and have a think about it. And I want you to rem remember particularly those six language types, number, object, etc, etc, but particularly number and object. So what do you think that ought to do? OK, and let's uh, pr press play on the video and uh, let's uh, find out what happens. And so, in fact, what happens uh, is it prints out undefined uh, as this is a bit strange what's going on what's going on well we've said that a is one and one is a number one is not an object and I cannot I can only set properties on objects I can only set keys on objects I can't set it on the number one and so this has silently failed to set the property name on the number one to boo 
Uh, and so then when I've gone to log it out, it has silently failed to get the uh, property that it has silently failed to set in the first place. And so it's come back undefined, uh, but it hasn't given me any errors along the way. Um, that's a bit of a pain because it, it's just giving me unexpected behavior. It's not telling me something's gone wrong. As a programmer, I'd rather it gave me an error, told me, no, no, no. When you went to set the property name, you were setting it on a number and that's why it's not being set. Here's an error for you. And so uh, ES5 introduced a way of turning on what's called strict mode. And so if you, at the top of your code, uh, you put the string exactly, uh, use strict with a semicolon after it. And so that looks kind of funny because it's, it's, it's a string with some particular contents and a semicolon afterwards. Uh, this should change what happens. And so now I've put that there and that has told it to go into strict mode and now it has given me type error can't assign to property name uh, on one not an object at line four and so now it is giving me an error instead of failing silently and as a programmer I would prefer it to give me an error when I've done something clearly wrong uh, rather than fail silently and just have weird behavior that I'm going to have an awfully awfully hard time trying to debug what's going on from what that weird behavior uh, so uh, a is one and one is a number not an object so in ES3 it failed silently to set the name on it uh, let's tell JavaScript to use strict mode uh, we put that string at the very top of each JavaScript file and it only applies for that JavaScript file um, noting that it's a string followed by a semicolon that turns on strict mode and then when I do it uh, it will actually give me my error to say no 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 you can't set a property on a number OK, so there's several more errors that strict mode makes ES5 strict about, uh, but I'm not actually going to go into details on all of those. Um, generally speaking, the moral of this story is put use strict at the top of your uh, at the top of your JavaScript files to turn strict mode on uh, so that it will tell you a bit more often when you're doing something silly. Um, that's where I'm going to end this video. Uh, there'll be some separate videos where I will talk about how JavaScript does object orientation. Uh, it has an unusual kind of inheritance that it does, which is called prototype inheritance. Uh, but that is well and truly deserving of its own video.